is the Berkeley County Administrator Gary Wine. Gary, good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good, good to have you with us here. Uh, Gary, have you bought yourself a side of beef at all in the recent past? You know, I, I bought myself a quarter of a side. So how about half a side, Rob? That'll work, right? Did, did yeah. you do that uh, this year? I did. I did. We've got uh, a, a woman that works in our office that they raise steers and sells them in quarters. And man, that's some of the best stuff you can get your hands on. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, very nice. Right do, you have, do you have a favorite recipe for preparing it? <laughs> Whatever my wife cooks. <laughs> that would be the way I would be. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Hey, uh, Gary, let's talk uh, broadband in the eastern panhandle and uh, get a little further into this. We had Steve Catlin on last week, and then at that time you texted me a link to some more information uh, about what's coming to Berkeley County. I guess we're doing the west side first and then the east side. Is that how it works? It is. So just for purposes of clarification, uh, we tried to do the, the application as the county as a whole, so we didn't have to pick and choose. But unfortunately, um, they really wanted us to define an area. So the most, most, most under and under, under and unserved are on the west side of North Mountain. So the, the project has been awarded. Uh, we're just waiting on contracts to be signed. And what that means is to the tune of about 4,000 homes, uh, you know, and we all know there's more than one person in a home typically, uh, will get opportunity for fiber to the premise uh, and in most instances that installation as part of the agreement will be if not completely covered under the grant uh, very nominal cost for the people receiving and then you'll have opportunity to get anywhere between 500 meg up and down in the residential environment to two gig up and down um, I'm, I'm one of those that lives even further out. I almost touched the Morgan County line, and I've got a beautiful three meg up and about uh, an eighth of a meg down. So it's a wonderful thing. Uh, and the, another piece to it that Commissioner Catlett spoke to was the ability for those that qualify under uh, certain uh, um, uh, values of income can qualify for a program that will completely reimburse them for the monthly rate. So even in some of the low income, internet will be free to them coming very, very soon. And this is from the Affordable Connectivity Program, a $14 billion program that Congress created to replace the Emergency Broadband Benefit Program. Uh, I'm reading from the link that you had sent me earlier this week. That's, that's exactly what it is. And, you know, the, the, from moms and dads to children uh, who, who can't, Tele-educate when necessary or can't telework uh, coming very, very soon in Berkeley County on the west side of that mountain uh, will be opportunity. And as soon as this contract gets ratified, we'll make application to start the second identified project will be everything east of the mountain and up into the Scrabble area where there's some very, very rural areas that don't have access clear down into the south southeast corner. So uh, hopefully in the next two to five years, every home in the Berkeley County will be served by high-speed internet. Gary, does this cover small businesses too? Or is it strictly residential? No, sir. It absolutely covers businesses. Uh, and those packages are structured similar, but the price range is not bad. Um, you know, the price range for their current uh, promotion is $60 a month for 500 by 500 and up to like 155 for two gig, two gig. So this when this is done, there should be fiber to the premise of everyone who didn't have service before in the entire county. Do you have to sign up to be eligible for this, or does it just encompass you as it comes through the area? Well, I'm, I'm sure the partner on the west side is Frontier Communications, and I'm, I'm positive that there'll be a marketing effort by them. But you remember, we've got Matt Umstead in our pocket, so look for some serious communication and publications coming out of our suite just as soon as that contract signed. And we, we did have conversations about doing some joint efforts to make sure everybody knows, get on the pre-sales list, get your name in front. So as they're coming by, paperwork's already signed and they can turn you up. Michael Hornby. In, uh, in years past, Gary, um, we, put, we put this infrastructure and it goes along the poles. Uh, in West Virginia, we seem to have uh, some long driveways, especially in our... Um, our suburbs out in the country. Will this include some of actually connecting to the house or will it be just going d down the, the current poles that we have? No, it, it does both, Mike. And there's, I'm looking through the document and I want to say, 
uh, that they'll go 250 feet on the premise. It's, it will be part of our publication when it comes out. And I knew that, that statistic when we started down this road a year and a half ago, and it's, it's escaped me exactly. But uh, I can offer that Frontier's proposal was the proposal that was most advantageous to the homeowner. So it goes further from the polls than anyone else's. Uh, and then if it's past that, part of this grant money that's available that they're using, there's subsidies to help them make the impact onto your house with long driveways less um, less harm less harmful on the budget. But yeah. I'm, I'm looking for it now, Mike. But, yes, there's help there as it stands. Because some, sometimes uh, it would cost upwards of $30,000 to get, get your driveway connected, but with these subsidies, maybe that will bring that cost way down for people. Yeah, and I'm looking to see. I, I want to tell you, but please don't hold me to it, but I believe it's 250 feet is what's included okay. in the package, and that's no cost to the homeowner. And then past that, it's all defined. I'll send you folks the document. You can read through it once it's signed. Excellent. Matt Harvey. Good morning, Gary. Um, is there any, with, with Starlink and other providers that are, are wireless uh, service providers, is there any, any availability for a subsidy to, to offset the cost of a Starlink unit? To, to the best of my knowledge, no, Matt. And to be honest with you, on the federal guidelines, I don't think that they they qual- that Starlink qualifies as true broadband by definition. Uh, s- some of the proposals we looked at included hybrid uh, wireless slash wired solutions, and those didn't qualify under the last round of definition. So um, to the best of my knowledge, no, only because it doesn't meet the standards. Is that a uh, connectivity the it, it, that maybe Starlink doesn't have the ability to transfer large, larger amounts of data, speed. like yeah, it, it's a speed thing. Um, it's I think it's twenty five ten is the current definition, which and it's sustained. And I think in the terrestrial and in you know that in the satellite stuff, they they don't believe by definition and in, in, in statistics that it meets the standard that they're trying to provide with fiber to the premise itself. I know we just had a uh, a big announcement from Starlink uh, in the last month, I believe, at the last interims. They did a, a, a presentation down in Charleston, and, and now Starlink's available to all of West Virginia. Um, and they I, really... I, as soon as it's available to me, I'll take yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't have it at my house yet. Gary, the subsidies that people may qualify for if they hit the certain uh, benchmarks that are necessary – to get these subsidies, do they last for uh, a year? Is it uh, until you no longer uh, qualify? How long will they last? Well, as, as I read it, it looks like it lasts until the money runs out uh, or they don't qualify. I, did, I didn't see any, as I read it, I didn't see any end in sight. Uh, one of the efforts, once we get this done, once all the paperwork signed, is we'll come up with a, a document, you know, a, a, a glossy slick sheet that shows everyone, kind of defines what's out there, what opportunities are, and what we understand. I mean, that's an FCC program, uh, has nothing to do with local government or state government. And, you know, we can just point them in the direction, and they, if they meet the criteria, as I understand it, uh, it's, it's done. It, it's harmless. Are, are schools under an entirely different category here, Gary, or will this include all schools as well? This includes anything that they pass. So when they, when they, they use the census data and they, talk, they call them passes, so addresses, structures, whatever you want to call it, how many passes. So it could have been a school building, it could have been your house or my house or a small business. If they're going by with this, they're coming in and dropping off. I see. So there'll be potential customers. Okay, very good. Uh, and yeah. uh, you, you said uh, between two and five years, uh, you think this may be completed on the west side? Yeah, two, we expect the west side to be completed in two years. Two I years. would hope that we can get this contract done, um, get another partner selected, and get the east side moving at the same time in mm-hmm. the entire county within five years. That's the goal. Well, it's a laudable goal. Gary, what about what about current customers? Are they able to apply for some of these subsidies? Some of the people that maybe they absolutely are, are. okay, they absolutely fantastic. are, Mike. There, and it's the affordable connectivity program. If you were to Google it, and then, like I said, we'll have a pretty big presence on distribution happening soon. It's just as soon as we get the contracts done. And is is the uh, the income rates based on like a federal level? So it would kind of mean that most of Berkeley County would qualify for these, or is it? 
is it really structured uh, based on our geographic area? No, I believe it's a federal level. Yeah, line. so that that would be even yeah. better for Berkeley because we Correct. don't exactly um, have high salaries here. Correct. Yeah, I, I think it's it's a wonderful thing, and it just you know the county commission's effort, as you all know, you've seen it. I mean, they work hard in every spectrum to try and make things better and make it a better place to live. And this is this is a big step, and it's been a lot of work for a, a lot of different people in. Uh, we're looking forward to taking the next step once the contract's signed and making it happen. Gary, in our comment community, and, and they can be skeptical at times, uh, there is some, <laughs> there is some, you, you're chuckling, you've seen, there mm-hmm. is some skepticism about the involvement of Frontier in regards to customer service and completion of tasks in a timely fashion. Has the county sure. been able to take any types of, uh, or undergo any types of arrangements with Frontier to assure quality customer assistance? Well, so that was that was one of the conversations we had in the very very front end of these deliberations after we received our proposals for everything. And I have to tell you, <coughs> Frontier and, and and I'm I'm not a supporter either way, right? I'm I, I have Gary Wine that is a customer of Frontier way out off of Mountain Lake Road, and then Gary Wine, the guy involved in trying to make this happen. So I will tell you that you get a completely different. Uh, set of service when you're a fiber to the home customer of Frontier than you are with the folks like myself that are using copper pairs that are 50 years old and the nuances and problems that you have with them. Uh, we had a committee that reviewed these bids and, and one of the, the folks on the committee uh, had recently switched from a, a cable provider locally to Frontier Fiber and he was like, it's amazing. Uh, they came completely different kind of technicians, completely different support calls. So all I can offer is our commitment to the grant is fractional compared to the total. You know, it's $18 million. The county commission has invested a hundred, excuse me, 1 million. It's 500,000 at the beginning of the contract and no more until completion. You know, that's a small pittance of what it is, but I can only offer that we're not going to pay unless everything's done right and things are going well. Gary, I'm going to switch gears on you here, unless you have anything else to add in regards to Frontier or Matt. You have a question still? I, I do. Was, was there a county match involved with this, or was this all 100% federal funding? No, Matt. It was it, county match was a million. Uh, the grant was about eight in change, and I believe Frontier covered the rest out of their business model. Okay. All right. So the county match, we matched uh, $1 million. Uh, G- Gary, I'm going to ask you about, I think actually uh, Steve Catlett mentioned that, or Eddie Gokenauer, when, when they were on discussing that uh, that million dollars the county put up. Yes. Uh, it, in regards to the indictments yesterday that we learned for Sheriff Nate Harmon, I know that at this time you folks probably haven't had an opportunity to get together and discuss that. You have a, a meeting coming up before the weekends here. But what is the oversight of the county commission of an office like the sheriff's department office and an elected official like the sheriff in a situation like this? To be honest with you, Rob, I don't know exactly. I would suspect that the county commission will have some discussions moving forward. Um, but for for me and, and for what we see, you know, the sheriff is, a, is an elected office and answers directly to the people uh, and to, obviously, to the court if they do something wrong. So... As I understand it, at this point, uh, we we don't have any involvement. I was receiving questions yesterday asking, does the county commission have the power to suspend, suspend without pay, uh, no. suspend uh, or remove? Uh, and, and I don't have the answers to those questions. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure Anthony Delegate, our legal director, could. But I can tell you that I do know that, no, the county commission does not have the authority to suspend or suspend without pay. I believe that there is a method uh, in in the county commission is one of the bodies that has the ability to start a process to remove one of the constitutional officers. But I don't know that. That's a better question directed to Anthony. I'd I'd be talking way above what I know and understand. Fair enough. Matt Harvey, you were looking at No, I may know. The the, the county commission can, yeah. There's three ways to institute removal proceedings. That's through a petition of enough voters that voted in the last election, a percentage um, as Deke mentioned on this program, the county commission can take a vote on removal, and which starts that process, or the prosecuting attorney can f- institute, initiate the 
pr- removing proce- procedures. Understood. Well, I just learned something there. I hope you did too. Yeah. <laughs> Switching gears again, Gary, um, you and I had a meeting uh, a few weeks back um, and you brought up this, the rollback. Can you inform our audience on, on how that works and w- why um, we need to change that procedure in West Virginia? And, and what is the rollback? I, yeah. Gladly. So there's, there's a law in the books that says that if a county grows more than 103%, uh, that its levy rate has to be rolled back to prevent that said growth. So we can't grow any greater than 103%. So as the three of you know, in the Eastern Panhandle, property values, uh, population, and demand on government far exceeds growth at 3%. So it, it, and it only applies to growth counties. If they aren't growing, it's irrelevant. They're probably, I bet if you took a poll of all of the 50 guy counties that say, hey, could anybody tell me which budget ran up against and got hit by the rollback, you probably would only see the Berkeley County people waving their hands frantically saying it was us, it was us, it was us. So um, you see the demand and inflation and everything growing at a, at a rate greater than what our revenue grows, and it, it puts us in a position where we absolutely cannot keep up. So, it, and there's no cap on that rollback. So every time you grow, you have to lower your levy rate, correct? Yeah, the, every time we grow greater than 103%, yes, sir, you have to go backwards. And so... And the, the, and the money, it's not like the money goes anywhere. Essentially what happens is, you know, if the rate gets reduced, the, the liability to the taxpayer, be it on, on either their real or personal property, is just reduced. Uh, their value goes up. Um, the money that they would owe would go up, and then it hits the rollback, it comes back, so they just don't have to pay as much. Their rate, the rate gets modified. So the maximum revenue growth you can have in one year from those assessments is 3% then? That is correct. So, and I, and I believe it only that, applies to about six counties out of the 55 that this, this actually happens to. Well, those are, I mean, just because they're a growth county, Mike, doesn't right. mean that, they're, that they hit the rollback. Right. So those six could, in fact, be growth, but I will bet you that not all six of them were hit by the rollback. Yeah, that's what I understand, too. Steve right. Catlett was and making it, a, good, Gary, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say it, it has significant impact on, on this county and its ability to, to truly get involved in, and you hear him say it often, I heard Steve say it the other day, on emergency services. I mean, fire law and EMS, uh, anytime you get involved with that stuff, 911, it's an expensive proposition. And that's when you grow, you know, we don't necessarily fund infrastructure that the sewer district, the water district do, but to support all of that stuff, uh, you, you grow, like I said, you grow at 7%, but your budget can only go at 3 Do the math, I mean, it's not going to work. I believe it was uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of this week when Steve Catlin was on making a case for the 1% sales tax, mm-hmm. home rule. Delegate Mike uh, Height was on yesterday, and he said it was something that he thought he would go for if the county would agree then to forego, I think it was the uh, stormwater right, fees, yeah. right? So uh, you're the revenue guy. Uh, I didn't prepare you in advance for this question. You didn't have a chance to look it up because I just thought of the question myself right now. So, sorry. But uh, I don't know if you've done a study to find out how much an additional 1% revenue sales tax would bring into the county, excluding the city of Martinsburg, because uh, I think Steve Catlett even said they would exclude the city of Martinsburg on that. It would just be outside the city. And then offset that with how much the county collects in stormwater or rain tax fees, so to speak. Sure. So we believe that the 1% sales tax should net at a minimum $8 million. Okay. That's what we believe that it would. And the, is, it is my understanding that the stormwater fee nets about 1.6. Well, that would be a net gain of 6.4 if, that's, if that math is accurate, that's, sir. That's good math, Ross. That's yeah. good math. And do we know from studies, I'm sure other places have done these studies, if you're raising eight million dollars in sales tax and you're in a border county, what percentage of that is paid by those who do not reside in the county? Well, that we've not had a study, uh, but we believe that that you know would be more fair to the people who are here. Uh, you're talking about eighty thousand vehicles that go up and down, 
81 every day. I mean, just pick 10% of those, uh, getting fuel, lunch, dinner, whatever it may be, hotel, motel stays, stuff like that, going out to eat afterwards. So uh, the burden of the 1% in the use tax isn't like the sales tax environment that we have now where it goes on the property owners of the county. A 1% is use. So those of us who shop at Costco and Winchester probably don't pay as much as those that go to Martin. So, um, you know, I think it's a good thing. And I, I've heard the delegates talk about it, it would be good for us. Uh, it would be a game changer to use Commissioner Catlett's coin, you know, everything sports with Steve. Uh, it would be a game changer for us, and we could really apply greater efforts to public safety. So if you come off of exit 12, and depending on whether you go right or left, you're, you're going to pay that 1% sales tax because you're either in Martinsburg or you're not. Correct. Correct. So it's either go to the city or the county, one way or the other. Right, but yeah. it's it's really confusing where the the city property or the yeah the, the boundary yes, is for the where the boundaries are right. Because I know like Target's not in it, but Chick Fil A probably yeah. is. Mike, it, it, you're a delegate. What do you think of this uh, the Mike Height plan? Uh, I uh, I would find it very hard to um, to vote for. It. I think it, the whole body as a whole, especially with the supermajority. Um, I don't think it would pass if it was simply just a one, permissive one percent sales tax um, for for any county. I don't think that would would go through. E very even well. if the voters, it was a referendum? however, if it was a referendum, a vote to have it go to the ballot, I think is a great idea. Then the people could decide, and, and I like that because I certainly didn't go down to Charleston to raise any tax on anybody. So. Um, that that it's a good idea. I know. I know. Steve's talked to me. I've talked to Eddie. I mean, it, it's a great way for for Berkeley County to to raise some revenue. We can meet some of our growth. But I think it has to go to the ballot. I, I think that's what uh, that's what needs. Let the people to, decide. Let the people decide if, if, if they want to do it. Uh, it's good the for closest them. thing to a toll booth that Berkeley County could get. Yes. In a sense, I would rather a toll booth. Honestly. No, I say no to toll booths, <laughs> especially for out of state folks. <laughs> you know, I think the a lot of your your inner counties would would a absolutely not w want that yeah. that that possibility. But your your border counties and certainly like places like Tucker that are that have a lot of out of state people coming in, they want to they want to tax them. Yeah, it for would their use. it would come it would come down to uh, the same as the the locality pay vote when, when i just add up the votes and i look at the actual yeah. body i think we're seven short from actually getting you ever go to ocean through. city ocean city yep. has its own special sales tax yep. district My and it's not one cent by the way it's a lot higher gary wine any final thoughts sir no sir gentlemen i appreciate it and like i said the the one percent sales tax would be a game changer and absolutely let the people decide put that baby on the ballot and let them spit yep. gary wine thank you so much you're welcome gentlemen have a good day